In this video, I'm going to teach you how to design your own custom paths in Animal Crossing New Horizons. So paths can be used to create roads and different like paths around your island, as you've already seen. And making your own custom path can seem quite difficult and tricky, especially if you don't really know how to like start or even what to look for. The best thing first is to look at what types of paths you want to do. I, I recommend Googling just types of paths, like outdoor paths, like, you know, just and give as many keywords as you can look. If you're looking for stone, if you're looking for wood, whatever types of themes, and then find a picture or something that relates to like what you want to kind of do and take that as inspiration. For us, we're we're going to be using this one here where it has a kind of like a a rectangle stone section in the middle covered by like these like rocks or these pebbles on the outer side. So I'm going to use that as my inspiration to to create a custom design path that looks very similar to this or is inspired by this look. So now we have to begin making our custom design. So obviously we go to our custom designs, we pick a empty slot, we will start designing on it. We open it up. The very first thing you need to do is pick a color palette. Now, this is something you really need to be super, super careful with. So look at what you're trying to make and look at the colors that are in the different color palettes because you can't use different colors from different color palettes. You're kind of like limited to just those few colors and you have to make sure that you're able to do your whole design with those few colors. In my case, since I'm going for a basic grayscale themed kind of custom design, I'm gonna use the grayscale palette there where it's got like white on the one end and black on the other end, and then basically various shades, like 50 shades of gray in between. <laughs> If you are using something that's like wood related, you're going to have to actually find one that has the right wood colors that work for you. So after you've picked out the correct palette that you want to use, now you're going to basically take your background and set it to a fill all of a color that you want to use as the main like kind of canvas of what your design is. I'm going to stick with like a medium kind of gray look here because I want my background of the rocks to be kind of outlined in this kind of like dark gray. And we're going to keep those little spots there so that we can adjust them later. So first things first, once you have your full background colored into one solid color filled all, now you're going to sketch out the basics of your design, your custom design. So for my design, obviously there is a rectangle involved. There's the, the square thing in the middle. Obviously, because I'm working with a square, I decided to put like a square instead of a small rectangle. I went for a, a proper square. So I'm going to outline the square in the middle of the custom design. And then I'm going to outline the rocks around the edges or like in the, the, the outer sides of that like square in the middle of the design. As you can see on screen, we're just going to be mapping out where these where these stones are and we're going to be using one consistent color for these kind of like the main color I want them to be uh, it's just kind of like sketching out or planning where these stones are going to be and one thing you want to keep in mind very very like intensively is a custom design works as a texture now a texture is something that kind of gets put next to itself over and over and over again what you want to be very careful with that kind of like that knowledge is to know that a texture duplicates upwards to downwards and left to right. So the left side of your custom design should match your right side of your custom design as much as you can. So if I put like a gray line on the one side and then like dots on this side, you're going to see when you put your custom design down, it's going to almost look like it has a like a line in between. It's going to seem like it's two separate things. We don't want that. We want it to look seamless. So when you have like four different gray dots here of like a certain color of gray, you should have those same four dots on the other side, at least on the edge. You can do like a different design on the one side and a different one on the other. But as long as that that color is the same on each side, it will look like the design is more like um, seamless so that it like it flows. It doesn't look like it has like a hard line where it's just like, oh, man, it doesn't match up. It looks so weird. It just it doesn't fit in. You're going to want to take very careful consideration with that. So once you've got the basic shapes and everything built on your whole custom design, now's the fun part. Now, this part might be very tricky depending what type of person you are. I'm a very logical person, so something like this actually bothers me so hard to do, but you have to kind of like turn it off. You have to be fully creative and you just go nuts. Like stop thinking about it logically and go like, no, but that, that color makes no sense. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take, let's say for the stones, you're going to take a lighter color and a darker color. You can start with whichever, whichever one you want. I usually go, I would normally start with the darker color first, like one shade darker. And you basically just draw like, like lines, like, like L shapes, little dots and kind of just like spread around. Imagine like you just like took like a paintbrush and you just flicked paint and it just like went in random places. Not all in like huge blobs, but like just spread out enough, leaving like one little block gaps in between everything. And what this does is it creates a form of shading for your custom design it's in like in terms of like the pixel art so that when you see it on the floor, it doesn't look like it's one like solid shade, like, like very plain and boring. You want it to be like mixed and creative and like have all these different things. So once you've done a dark shade, you're actually going to go one shade lighter than your, 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 
previous or your original one. So you're going to basically have everything be like a consistent thing of like three or sometimes even four different shades, depending on how, how realistic or like, you know, how much like leeway you have and what colors in your palette will actually work for what you're trying to do. So you can go four different shades of like the one color and then just keep like just dotting it pretty much everywhere. As you can see on screen, I've been doing it this whole time, just like creating this like random effect where you just kind of drawing lines and little dots and things just everywhere, but like not all in like big blobs, kind of all spread out, right? And this creates a kind of like form of like randomness. Like if you had to see someone else's design like this at the end and you're like, how the hell did you make this? You kind of realize that it's just mostly like randomness. You kind of just like map it out, like you sketch out the whole design and then you just like put out, put down your shapes and then you just kind of shade it like with like random colors in like a just random ass way. It's like, it's actually kind of fun because you're just like doing something completely random. It's like not really difficult at all. And then, you know, you do the same thing for the outline because obviously there's the stones and then there's like the outline behind the stones, the background where we take a darker color there and we create like more of a, you know, a proper outline to it until the outline looks what we want it to, to be like. So yeah. Once you've shaded everything on your whole like tile or custom design, what you want to do is then place it on the ground. Save it, give it a name, place it on the ground and see how it looks. Place it around itself. Give it like, you know, put it to the left of itself, to the right of itself, put it in like a square and see how does it look when it's placed next to itself. Does it create like a seamless pattern? Does it look nice? Is the color like way too flat? Is there not enough contrast? Is it too dark? Is it too light? These are all things you need to take into consideration so that it that it like actually fits on your island so that it it actually makes sense and if you aren't happy you can actually go back into the tile there on your custom design and kind of just change it again you can make slight changes slight adjustments i do recommend though if you are at a happy point with your with your custom design but you want to try something new i really recommend just on the custom design menu screen where you can see the custom designs press the y button to copy it and paste it to another empty slot or something that you're okay with replacing and then make your changes on the new one so that you have your old one, but you can make changes on a new one as well. You can also do this to create different versions of that same one. For example, a lot of the custom designs are created with like, okay, cool. There's like a, maybe like, for example, you can see on my island, there's a, there's like ones with these like side strips. There's like a strip on the side of the, of the tile there. So if you want to do something like that, you literally just copy your design into like nine different locations. You have your middle design, and then you create a right side, a left side, a top side, a bottom side, and and then the four corner sides, you know, bottom left, top right, top left, bottom right, uh, if I said all of them in the correct order there. <laughs> And that's pretty much how you're going to be doing this whole custom design process. The creativity is going to come from your side and what kind of inspires you to create a specific type of path. Some of them will be more difficult to create than others. And some of them are like really easy. I mean, this one actually was super easy. It took me like probably 15 minutes to actually make this. And I, it like, it looks okay. I don't really like the square in the middle. It doesn't suit me, but it's something that I was like, okay, cool, interesting. It gives me ideas of what I can do next time. So if you're into custom design path making, this is something that might help you make your own paths that are unique to you that nobody else will have on their, their islands. You'll basically have this like unique path that is only available on your island. And then you can also give out your link code like I've given out my link code here on screen right now if you do want to get this path yourself or some of the other custom designs I've made because I've made some clothes as well. You can get them over there as well. And yeah, I hope this guide helps you in making your own custom designs on your island, your own custom paths and everything. And I'll see you guys in a future video. If you do have any problems, let me know in the comments below. I do reply to every single comment, so test me right now in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in a future video. Thank you for watching.